All right, Mayor, we're ready. Okay. All right, then um, let me call the city, the socially distancing city commission meeting to order May 5th, 2020. I'm going to ask the city clerk to call the roll. Mayor Weissman? Here. Vice Mayor Narofsky? Here. Commissioner Landman? Here. Commissioner Dr. Marks? Here. Commissioner Mizrahi? Here. Commissioner Shelley? Here. Commissioner Weinberg? Here. Mr. Wasson? Here. Mr. Wilson? Here. You have a quorum. Thank you so much. This meeting shall be held in accordance with the Governor's Executive Order 2020-69 because of COVID-19 and the need to ensure the public health, safety, and welfare, this meeting is being conducted remotely via Zoom. Due to the ongoing state of emergency and recommendations from all public health authorities, the City of Aventura recommends that all persons view and participate in the meeting in the meeting through electronic means. Members of the public have been directed on how to access the meeting through the agenda posted online and at Government Center. Members of the public will be able to provide comments via audio when the item is opened to public comment. The city clerk will provide directions on how to participate when the item is opened for public comment. With that said, if we all could please stand and recite the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, it stands one nation, nation under God, 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 God visible, indivisible, with liberty and justice, and justice for all. all. Okay, the first item um, on our agenda is the election of vice mayor. Do I have someone to put a name into nomination? Commissioner Shelley. Yeah, has Gladys, I, I'll nominate Gladys. Has she been, has she been before? I'd like to nominate Gladys Mizrahi if possible, because I don't think she's done it before. You can nominate anyone. Okay. Everybody's done it. Ron, I can't answer. Oh. I'm not the keeper of. I don't either. I just. I, I believe everybody has been the vice mayor before. But I... Okay. Okay. Gladys, is na Gladys Misrahi's been nominated for vice mayor. Do I have to relinquish? Do I have to relinquish? Or I, I... Uh, well, no. Somebody nominates you, Mark, and you no. get the votes, obviously. <laughs> It'd be too much. It's too much work. It's too much work. But you were good, Mark. Come on. Do I have any other nominations? Seeing as there are none, Gladys Mizrahi is our new vice mayor. Uh, Mr. Attorney, was that appropriate? Uh, you could just a, a quick uh, roll call vote to confirm that. All right, let's have a quick roll call, call vote, City Clerk. Commissioner Landman? Yes. Commissioner Dr. Marks? Yes. Commissioner Mizrahi? Yes. Commissioner Narotsky? Yes. Commissioner Shelley? Yes. Commissioner Weinberg? Yes. And Mayor Weissman? Yes. Motion passes. Okay, I'm going to ask the city manager if we have any requests for deletions or emergency additions. Thank you, thank you, Mayor. I do have one matter that I'd like to ask the uh, commission to consider. Our attorney, Alan Kluger, is, is present uh, to request um, an executive session on a matter that there he's representing us at the Miami-Dade, with Miami-Dade schools. So if Alan, you could, Make a request. Uh, Mr. Attorney, I, I have a question. There are two members of this commission that are recused from those actions. To, so what do we do at, at this you point? Are, uh, thank you for asking, Mayor. You and the other commissioner are permitted to stay for this because this is simply a ministerial procedure, formal request that to uh, 
where Mr. Kluger will able to say that he uh, requests direction and will be scheduling an attorney-client session. So you're perfectly permitted to stay for that. No voter action is required. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Did Mr. Kluger? Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'm Alan Kluger. I'd like to um, formally request um, direction for an attorney-client session with the commission uh, and the setting of an executive session. And Mr. Kluger, if you can just recite the name of the case briefly for the record. The name of the case is the City of Aventura versus the Miami-Dade County School Board. Thank you. Oh. Um, if if we have- Mr. Attorney, is there any discussion on this? Uh, no, no discussion. And the manager will coordinate with Mr. Kluger setting of the actual session in the future. And at that time, the mayor and uh, Commissioner Landman will not attend that particular se session in accordance with your prior re recusals. And the city clerk will assist Mr. Kluger with the posting of the special notice for the attorney client session. Thank you, Council for the City. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, then am I correct in going on with the rest of our agenda? Correct. Yes. Okay. At this time, you know, normally we do special presentations. Mayor? I had one item I wanted to ask if it could be discussed separately from the consent agenda. I haven't even gotten there. And oh. Mayor, I'm going to excuse myself having made the request to the commission. Have a, and have a good evening, everybody. Stay safe. You Thank you, Mr. Kluger. Stay safe. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, I'm on item number five. Okay, not the consent agenda yet. Thank you. I have asked that our city manager give us and the public an update on what's been happening over the past 30, 35 days due to the COVID-19 uh, vi virus. We want to hear about police, the parks, how the opening went, schools, whatever the issues are that the city manager could now present to us and the community, please. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mayor. The ma as as uh, the mayor had asked, she said, I'd like, like some, uh, some information on what's been going on, just so the public knows that we've been actively doing things here in the city and not just kind of hiding out. First, let me, let me uh, talk about the parks. The parks opened yesterday uh, and really was, has gone, you couldn't ask for a smoother opening. Our Kimberly Merchant has really done a great job in, in, in getting her staff uh, trained and ready to address the public. We did have other cities that opened earlier and had some issues with the public. I think that she really did a, a, a great job at getting the information to people uh, so they knew what to expect when they came to the park. Um, if you hadn't seen it, you, I suggest that you do see it. That they actually put together a, a short video in the Star Wars presentation mode where um, you would see almost like the original Star Wars banner rollout addressing the opening of our parks. She had video of uh, Yoda, Chewbacca, and all the, all the characters that uh, in from the movie. And it was really a great way to kind of, kind of uh, lighten the mood and get the information out to people. Uh, she worked very well. Obviously the police department was integral in this setting the mood that you know, we were controlling how many people were coming into the park, what was going to happen, how they were going to act. And I have to say our residents really have been fantastic, with the exception of a couple of uh, footballers that uh, kind of we had to take them in hand, but they were, they were pretty good, a couple of youngsters, and, uh, but everything was really done well. Uh, one of the questions I have been getting a lot of, and I'm sure you have too, is when are we going to open the dog parks? When are we going to open pools, bike rentals, playground equipment, just regular business openings, and even the beaches, even though uh, we don't have beaches here. I can tell you that the, uh, the mayor of the county has been has several working groups that have been active for the last two weeks. And I believe you're going to see this week some information coming out regarding some of these, some of these, uh, these items, particularly 
uh, all the managers have been pressing for pools. We really think that's been one area that would be beneficial to everybody if, and take a little pressure off everybody that's in the buildings and with, uh, with really little to do. It's, it's just something that could happen that would make things life a little bit easier for everybody. I know the mayor has said that he's, very, he's not gonna make a decision until he gets a blessing from the doctors. Now I think, and I believe he's using the same medical personnel that Broward County has used to help him help them make decision on pools. I've relayed the information that our condo um, boards and condo building uh, management companies are a little bit ahead of probably most people and that they've been coming up with plans and they've actually exceeded some of the county's regulations on letting people in their buildings, who comes in, who goes out. It's almost uh, a couple of times I had to ask to let certain people into the building uh, for, for some of the residents because actually one of them was just trying to move in and literally couldn't move in. And so they got a, a, a dispensation from us. But overall, that's what's been happening with uh, throughout the county. So I do expect you're gonna see some movement soon on those areas. I wanna tell you that Public Works has been very active and Joe Kroll and his team, they really haven't missed a beat while they have been going and getting ahead of a lot of the regular work and maintenance that we get sometimes behind in or we have to wait for school to be out and even in the parks. I mean, there's been a lot of activity that you don't normally see because you're not in the schools right now, they're closed, and also in the parks. Uh, right now, I can tell you they're redoing the dugouts oh, over yeah. in waterways. They've been making some uh, repairs to bathrooms and painting and all the stuff that, again, you really, you gotta wait to the right opportunity. So they have maximized their time right now to get some of those things done. Aside from that, Joe has also been working on projects to get the, uh, the you're gonna be voting on tonight the sea wall on Yacht Club Drive. Did someone? Uh, Yacht Club Drive. Um, we, we have a couple of other projects that will be coming to you. Street, street repaving and just the regular business of the city that has, to go, that has to continue. He's also been doing a fantastic job of disinfecting our government center. You might not have been aware that we've had two close calls with uh, personnel that were exposed to COVID-19. Although the, both of them thankfully did not come back and they were tested negative, it still had us go into full, um, I don't wanna say lockdown mode, but Joe stepped up and had the entire building and actually put us on a full deep cleaning on a weekly basis, in addition to what we do on a daily basis. So uh, I have to say they've been doing a great thing. I mean. The last thing that I don't know if you've noticed that it was recommended, I think at our last workshop that we try to hit the benches along uh, Country Club Drive and kind of make them inaccessible to sitting. There's, as he told me, there's uh, 79 benches on Country Club, which is a lot hard to believe. Most people are respecting them, several are not, and they tear, they tear them away. He goes out every day and rewraps them as he sees them. Uh, and that's what, that's what I can say about public works. On community services with Joanne's department, I have to tell you, a lot of cities closed their building departments and made it, you know, they kind of shut down. I'm happy to say that we did not do that. This, this uh, building department with Joanne kept everybody and kept business open. While we had to do it a little differently, um, we, we came up and devised a plan that people wouldn't come up in the building they would stay downstairs, they would drop their permits or re permit requests off, and um, their inspection requests would be called in. But the inspections went on, building permitting went on, and uh, I'd like to say that Joanne was still actively helping our, our big, big projects and developers coming in with assistance on moving jobs ahead so that we didn't get behind and, you know, that we weren't, we weren't sending out a message that we weren't open. So I'd like to say thank you to Joanne. I can't say, you know, the police department, I, know, I can see Chief uh, uh, Brian Pegues is on the line. You can't say enough about our police department. I could spend the next hour about them. But I would like to bring to your attention Sergeant Mark Frieda. You probably all know him. He's our uh, 
He's the bulldog of the department, uh, especially when it comes to traffic enforcement. He, he takes on a lot of jobs, but this one I know he's very proud of. And FDOT recognized Aventura Police Department, but singled out Mark and recognized him for not, not, not having a, I hate to, I, hate, I don't want to jinx us, but we haven't had a fatal, a fatality uh, car accident in three years, which is kind of amazing, especially in, um, Dade County. Um, before I, I have two other things I'll just bring up briefly. I know uh, Commissioner Marks really worked hard in getting us to get a mental health resource hotline up and running on our website. And while I can't give you exact and you know, they, they don't share certain information with us and it's very private, I can tell you through our IT department, we could tell you how many people went on that, that resource page and viewed it and reviewed it. So we had 277 clicks or people that went on that and to, to review it. I don't know if that's how many people called up, but I can tell you uh, that's how many times since it's been up in April. April 16th, I think was the date it went live. So that's pretty, that's pretty impressive. And last, I'll finish off with the COVID testing that's been going on at the mall. Uh, that, that company actually has been requested by Bell Harbor, Surfside, and Bay Harbor Islands, which is going to be using their, some of their, their testing um, uh, people. They're going to set up a site just for the, that community, similar to ours. They're going to be targeting seniors and first responders. I can tell you, since they've been up and running, they've been doing, they started a little slow, but I tell you, they've hit their mark. They've done over 6,000 tests. 25% of those have been seen as citizens over 65, which is our target audience. 15% have been first responders. And I, I couldn't get the percentage yet was how many were from Aventura, which has been anecdotally the largest percentage. So a lot of people from Aventura have gone once, some have gone several times. But uh, they've been able to really, I think from, for the employees, it's very nice knowing that if you really got to get a test, you can get a t test and it, you don't, you don't really have to go, uh, you know, jump through hoops to get it. Um, hopefully that that's changing as time goes on, but uh, they've been doing very good and we're working with them when eventually the mall opens, we uh, have plans to relocate them to another area and perhaps do another month of testing in the city. So right. that's just some of the things that we've been doing uh, over the last couple of days. Could, could you also address us on how the city is doing in terms of equipment, masks, PP and E, all the things we keep hearing about that are in short supply? Uh, very early on, we, we went and got um, personal protective equipment, um, uh, masks, we have uh, uh, masks and gloves. Right now on hand, we have about 8,000 masks and uh, probably God, I forget the count of gloves, but a significant amount of gloves. So we do have that. We don't, I don't stock gowns, um, but we have that available for the police offices. I can tell you that we have just ordered um, cloth masks for each employee. You'll be getting two of them with an Aventura logo. Because in oh, the nice. future, it's going to get harder to either, it's going to get harder to get these masks or you're going to continuously run out of them. This way, everybody will have a mask and that they can wash them and reuse them and make it a little, little better over the long course. Commissioner Shelley. Mark, do, you, do we have a count? Or do you have any idea of the 6,000 that were tested? What percentage were positive? Um, about between 6 and 7%. Okay. Is that the norm for what they found with other counties? Pretty, pretty much. He said it, it actually goes up and down a little bit. Um, he found that it, had, it started low and it's built up a little bit, but then it has gone down a little bit. So he said it, it's about six or seven percent. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner uh, Vice Mayor Mizrahi. You're, you're muted, Gladys. Uh, hi. I just wanted to say, Linda, thank you so much. You have no idea with that, uh, the support call. 
you literally, I think you saved the life of a young mother and her little daughter. She spent uh, three or four nights, she was very sick and that helpline helped her through the whole sickness. So thank you. Commissioner Landman. Yeah, Ron, approximately, do you have a count of how many people have been to our parks? Do we know? Uh, a little over 600. A day or? Oh no, to, up to date. Okay. Give okay. or take, yeah. Okay. All right, thank you. Um, but that's 600 in two Please days? raise your hands. Please raise your hands, guys. It makes it so hard. I can, I can give you a breakdown. It was um, mostly at Founders, um, slow in the morning, um, generally slow in the morning. This, we do have seniors coming. Uh, they get to park their car. Not too many. They do a couple of laps and off they go. And uh, I think we've only had one special request that, you know, at a later time to come in. Uh, but the majority of them have come in the five to eight hour. Also, yeah. it gives time that, that that middle break gives uh, the public works department. They have a roving, a roving clean team that goes around and it hits all the bathrooms. Okay. And I'm looking for hands. My uh, Commissioner Weinberg. What about uh, every person coming in has their temperature taken? So what yes. is the cut, what is the cutoff, and how many people get turned away? We haven't turned anybody away. The highest temperature was a hundred, but it thinks it was more that the, they were they were walking in the sun. They do we have a cutoff? It would be over well, you know, one hundred and one something. I have a question. What do the medical professionals say the temperature cutoff should be? I don't, I don't have that information, you know, handy. Can we find, I can out? find out? Okay, that's good enough. Um, I have two more questions, really. I'd like an update on the census. The last information that I was given, and it, it, it may not be correct, but that we've only gotten 42% and we come in 285th of the cities in the state of Florida. It, that those didn't look like good numbers. It was two days ago. So if you can correct them, I'd be very happy. Uh, I can tell you that I know 40, that, that number, for, did you say 46%? I said, I saw 42, but again, 42. It every day. From when, from when we first started talking, we've gone up a lot. We've, we've, we're putting out a lot of information every week working with the Aventura Marketing Council. I think you're gonna to continue to see that number go up. Um, you know, I don't like to compare ourselves with other, our other cities around us, but um, we're, we're well ahead of some of our neighboring towns. Uh, but our effort is to continue to send out press releases, go to the uh, managing, ma uh, management companies and our property managers to continue to, to, to try to get them to, to to fill out and self-report. Okay, but coming in 285th it is not a good ranking for our city. Um, I think that the ad that IT did about the parks was wonderful. If they could do something on that kind of genre that would catch people's attention, it, it might really, and if Joanne would give us any ideas, because she's the one that's done this before, what we can possibly do but remember, it's money. It's, it's money for our schools primarily. And, and then congressional representation. So, you know, if, no, we, I understand. if we go up two points, but we're still in the bottom 20% of the state, it, you know, I, I don't think we're serving our residents well because we're not going to get the funding. And I, I don't know, what did they do? Did they change it to July 1? Um, I'm not sure exactly the date, date. maybe Joanne could you, the new date that you're allowed to go to. I think it's one month. Well, then it would only be, I, I don't know if Joanne hears us. You're muted, Joanne. Okay. I, I can't, I don't know if Joanne, Joanne you're, she's still muted, but Here oh, go I, ahead. Can you, can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. 
and and thanks mayor for bringing that up and we and city managers correct we're we're um, putting out as much information as we can the um, you know the the tweets are going out daily we're sharing all the all the census uh, bureaus information we're sending um flyers to all the property managers weekly and, and we'll monitor that way that uh, that rate and it is going up um, weekly. Um, the thing about self response rate is we'd love to get 100% self response rate. Um, at a certain point when, when uh, it's safe, the federal census workers will be going out to each address that has not self responded and we will get a full count of our residents through that in person visit. It's, it's just, you know, we'd, we'd like to help the, the, the census workers by getting as many people as we can to self respond, but they will eventually be counted by that in person visit. And, and what's the deadline? I think the, the last one I saw was um, October. October. And I saw another one even in October now. So, um, we've got lots of time till and we will we will keep working with as much promotion as we can to get everyone to uh, to get up you know get that rate up that self response rate up um, but be assured that the, the federal workers will be out for everyone who has not responded to see um, you know if first of all if the if the unit is occupied and if it is, um, gather the information from that person. You know, and normally the time frame for this isn't the summer, because again, this summer is different. I don't know if people are going to go away and not be in residence. We don't know what's going to happen in September and October. Um, but we know we have every day becomes precious. So yes. I don't, and again, I don't know. I'm just, so if somebody dressed as Mickey Mouse and was at the park and we had the census forms there and kids could take a picture with Mickey, maybe you'd be able to get more parents registered and anybody else's ideas that come up. There's some cities that are knocking it out of the park. Mm -hmm. And again, I would always look to, the, if it's a residential city with all houses, well, we, you know, we know that's not our comparison, but there's some people that look more like we do. So maybe we can make calls and find out what it is they're doing. Sure. Okay, Denise. We, yes, we had also discussed at our last workshop, potentially getting some information to us and then the, the commissioners would send it out to their networks. Um, I don't know if you're working on I that. I thought I sent that out. I'll, I'll resend it. I, I'll, I'll send that out. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And unless anybody has any questions for our city manager, the chief, or I just thought it was important for the community to hear that we're well prepared, that we have the equipment that we need, that the parks opened very smoothly, um, and then anything else you want. Is there anyone? Okay. Then. Um, I'm going to go on to item six. And Dr. Marks, you had indicated before that you had a question or wanted to ask something. I, I wanted to know if item F could be removed for a separate discussion. All right, then let me, go, let me go through my procedure. I'm going to ask if any member of the commission would like to remove an item from the consent agenda. Dr. Marks has indicated that she would like to remove item F. Can I have, and David, help me through it. Can, can I have a motion for removing item F? And when I, I ask the, uh, for the vote, when I ask for the vote to approve the consent agenda, I'm asking for approval of all items except item F. That's correct, and Mayor. Will, and then we will come back and discuss item F. Correct, that's right. So item F is removed at this time. So as you stated, you can now have a motion to approve the balance of the consent agenda. Can I please have a motion to made by Commissioner Shelley, seconded by Vice Mayor uh, Mizrahi. Um, I'm going to ask the clerk for a roll call vote. Commissioner Landman? Yes. Commissioner Dr. Marks? Yes. Commissioner Narotsky? Yes. Commissioner Shelley? Yes. Commissioner Weinberg? Yes. Vice Mayor Mizrahi? Yes. And Mayor Weissman? Yes. Motion passes.
Okay, we have item F, and it's been removed from consent. So, um, Mr. Attorney or City Manager, will you read the item for the public, particularly, because I don't know if all of them have a copy of it in front of them. Thank you, Mayor. A uh, resolution of the City Commission of the City of Aventura, Florida, awarding and letting a bid contract for bid number 2003-2073, Yacht Club Drive Seawall Repairs to Shoreline Foundation Incorporated, at the bid price of $448,885, authorizing the city manager to execute associated contracts, authorizing the city manager to take necessary and expedient action to carry out the aims of this resolution, providing for the appropriation and allocation of funds for said bid award, and providing for an effective date. And I have a motion to move item F to the floor. Made by Commissioner Landman, can I have a second, please? Seconded by Commissioner Dr. Linda Marks. Um, are there any commissioners that would like to speak to this item? Commissioner Dr. Marks. So um, the seawall was damaged a, a while back and there were numerous um, people who inquired about this over the last many months who live in the area along 213. Uh, from 34th going east. And I would just like our, to ask our city manager publicly to explain this and the process and uh, the selection just because there were many questions. And I, I would just like the public to know that this was done very, very responsibly and that uh, it took time because of a number of different reasons that I think that our city manager could explain. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, it's, um, as you know, we had a, uh, several months ago, uh, we had a very big storm, a lot of rain, and several seawalls throughout Aventura and actually through Miami-Dade County were uh, damaged. Uh, along the Yacht Club Drive, there was two areas that, that collapsed or, or, or moved significantly. So what we do is, if there is any chance that the wall was gonna collapse further or do more damage, uh, you, you would do an emergency repair and and, and do an instant repair. Here, after our engineers uh, inspected it, it was in good enough condition that it wasn't moving and that we could go and follow a normal bidding process. Uh, as you can see, I don't know if, if any, when you look at the, the bids, we have five bids from five reputable, reputable companies and the bid spread is quite large. Now that could mean, it means really a couple of things. One. Uh, we estimated, or our engineers estimated, the cost of this job should be about four hundred and fifty to four hundred and seventy thousand dollars. And you can see by the bid, it was very, it was right on, right on the money. The other, the other companies that bid, usually the high ones, means that they're really busy and they have a lot of work and they take a shot, you know, or they just think they, that they're, they're going to get their money. The other ones I would think are, you know, um, maybe they think Aventura has a little more to put in the pot. I don't know, but $448,000 is what we think that this job is, uh, will bring, we can get this, this fixed for. If we had done an emergency repair right out of the box, it would, we would have been paying in the neighborhood of over a million dollars to do that type of work. So I think for the city's point of view, um, we took, you know, we took, we're taking action and it's in the appropriate time and we're, we're not going to overspend for a job that clearly can be done for a lot less than $1.8 million. I don't know, is that, I don't know is if that there any other commissioner that would like to address the item? Okay, can I have a motion to approve item F? made by Commissioner Shelley, seconded by Commissioner Dr. Linda Marks. Um, I'm going to, wait a minute. I have to open this item for public comment. Yeah. yeah, I have to open it for public comment. So is there anyone in the public that would like to address this item at this time? Members of the public wishing, if you would like to make a comment on this item, you need to tap the screen on your smartphone or tablet or move the mouse on the computer and uh, click on the icon to raise your hand at this time. 
Mayor, I'm not seeing anybody who wishes to speak on this comment um, on this item. So, so it was um, no commissioner w wishes to speak. I think we're ready for a roll call vote on Mr. item F. Yes. Commissioner Dr. Marks? Yes. Commissioner Narotsky? Yes. Commissioner Shelley? Yes. Commissioner Weinberg? Yes. Vice Mayor Mizrahi? Yes. And Mayor Weissman? Yes. Motion passes. Okay, I'm going to adjust slightly because I see that our two principals are on now. And with the commission's permission, I would like to first listen to Principal Trakala and see what's happening at ACES and inform the commission. And then we'll go directly to Principal McKnight. Hey, good this evening. Way they don't have to sit for our entire meeting and they can go on because schools are in session. Good evening. Um, so ACES is doing awesome. We're celebrating Teacher Appreciation Week this, this week. And um, thank you to the mayor uh, for coming today to honor our teachers. Um, they're definitely worthy. All teachers are worthy and they're very grateful for all of the support they always receive from the city of Aventura. Obviously this transition online required everyone to drop everything and change the way they do all of their work, but our families, our students, and our teachers all rose to the occasion. And there's a lot of dynamic um, lessons happening. We're doing our best to share that through social media. We're connecting with other schools throughout Charter Schools USA and around the state to really try to get best ideas. And our goal right now is to, to keep learning going, but also to learn lessons that we can use in the future if we find ourselves in a situation like this or some hybrid version of this. Um, so we have a working group where we're considering all contingency plans for the possibility of this next year, um, while also, you know, again, focusing on the standards, diagno diagnosing where students might be deficient, finding ways to support them throughout the summer, and then planning for what next year would look like. Um, so it's really an all hands on deck approach. Um, Everyone is working outside of their comfort zone, but doing it, you know, to the utmost of their ability. So it's been a great way to just honor teachers right now for all of the work they've been doing. Okay. Um, any commissioners have any questions of Mr. Tricala? All right, then let's go. Uh, Commissioner Marks. Just one question, um, Principal Tricala. Did you do anything for Earth Day? We did in the grade level. Um, so mostly our younger elementary students, they made art projects and they were able to connect across grade levels. So I think one of the nicest ones was our fifth grade students did <coughs> projects and went down and presented it to our first grade students. Um, but not a school wide event like we typically would be able to do. Thank you. Okay, then if there are I have one question. Is there any anticipation of summer school for the bottom 25%? So we are, we're not summer school per se, but we are providing weekly guided lessons for all students and then targeted lessons for students who might need some growth. Um, and we're providing some teachers as go-tos for support and Zoom sessions. So it wouldn't be summer school where there's assignments and, and going back and forth. As of right now, that's not something we have budgeted to support. Um, definitely open to it, but we do have guided weekly lessons and we're able to build that off of what we did during spring break. Um, so our goal is to continue learning in the summer in a way that we never have. And we think that's important for all students um, since we have this learning loss of this month and a half. <clears throat> okay. Um, yeah, you know, children always regress in the summer, but I think we have to be honest they're missing most of the second semester of the school year. Absolutely. And while we get no grade this year, it, it's gonna be almost a double whammy next year. Absolutely, that's definitely something we're, we're hyper-focused on through diagnostic testing, even doing virtual diagnostic testing, which we've never done, but we're, we're taking steps to make sure that we're communicating clearly and, and creating processes to get accurate data. Rachel, any comments from Charter USA on summer and, and the bottom 25%? and the education of kids. Yeah, so every school is um, working on their individual plans. Um, I know David can speak to what he's doing at the high school, but we're providing and focused more on summer tutoring versus a summer school. Um, and we are also administering a spring diagnostic assessment to identify which students um, would most qualify for that summer tutoring. 
um, and looking at the cost savings. So even though it wasn't initially budgeted for the school, because we did not provide tutoring during the last quarter of the school year, there's a cost savings there that we're gonna use to apply towards um, paying teachers over the summer to tutor students that we've identified. Which brings up um, a question to the city manager, I believe. We also didn't pay for transportation for a number of those weeks. Right, um, we, could we that haven't been invoiced. For, uh, yeah. We haven't been invoiced. But could the that. money that we set aside for that be utilized for the kids that need the help and support um, due, to no, due to no fault of their own? Yes, okay. I'm sure we could, things could be worked out. Right, and, and let's look at anything we haven't delivered that had a cost number to it. Because this, like I said, this will be a double whammy next year. It's not our friend. Um, and that's okay with you, Rachel? Okay, Mr. McKnight. Good evening, everyone. Nice to be with you this evening. Um, some of the things we're doing here at Don Sofer Aventura High School, uh, we are a one-to-one -one school, so every student has had an iPad from the very beginning. We are hosting our faculty meetings, our leadership meetings, and our department chair meetings through Microsoft Teams and our teachers are hosting their online learning connections with their students through Zoom. So uh, the feedback we've been getting is it's going very smoothly and um, our students are attending. I think I shared with you earlier, our attendance rates between 91 and 92%. So overall, we're doing very well in that regard. Um, we have had professional development for our teachers online. Uh, we have been giving them uh, some focus on Nearpod as well as through, uh, as well as Flipgrid, as well as giving them a, a, a host of resources uh, that they can access online to support their online learning platform and their online learning uh, through their teaching. So we've been doing a lot of support in that regard as well. Um, Teacher Appreciation Week is this week. We've been very uh, focused on uh, honoring them. I sent out uh, gift cards today with a uh, letter that I wrote to each and every teacher to uh, really make them feel special. We know they're going above and beyond during this time period. Um, so it's very, very important that we let them know that. Um, we're also doing some other things. Uh, we have an Amazon wish list that teachers put together that parents can help support. And already here at the school, uh, those, uh, gifts have started to arrive and we're going to be placing those in teacher classrooms so when they when we're finally uh, allowing them to come in to uh, pack up for the summer uh, we will be able to uh, share those items with them and i think it will really brighten uh, their uh, day to know these parents have thought of them in such a nice and uh, comforting way so that's uh, that's really it in a nutshell. We've, we've really been working hard. Our students, by the way, we've mandated at least two mastery grades per week and we are, the teachers are going above and beyond that uh, with an average of so far to date 18 mastery grades. Uh, and we're just at the interim. So we're, we're doing really well in uh, giving the students um, feedback and support when needed. Um, we are looking into our summer uh, focus to support those students who really need additional um, help. And uh, we're looking at virtual tutoring and um, ways that we can support them through the summer to help them become, uh, to help the slide be less significant. Uh, so that'll be very, very important as well. Um, we continue to hire for the new year um, and so we, we have, we just try to keep all things moving. We have almost finished the ninth grade incoming class interviews and course selections. And we, this week we will finish up the ninth grade moving to 10th grade uh, uh, course selections. And I tell you, that's been a great process because we stay in touch with folks by, by working with them, both Ms. Clapier and I and Ms. Turnipseed, our guidance counselor, that has that touch base with families has really been a powerful part of who we are and what we do. 
And that's my report. Thank you, Commissioner Landman. Still muted. Can't hear you. Sorry. Um, you mentioned, David, you mentioned 91 to 92 percent attendance. So to the handful of students who are not connecting or logging in, are we doing outreach? Are you calling the parents, the families to make yes. sure? Yes, Commissioner Lehman, that's a great question. Um, we, we have our guidance counselor following up with those students. They're not always the same students. So but every time we get to the third day of absences, we make those calls and we document those calls in, uh, in DSIS so that we make sure that we're uh, following up. Uh, if, if someone is chronically absent, then either I or the assistant principal get involved and we make those calls to the parents. Commissioner Lambin. Um, you mentioned next school year. Are we considering options for a hybrid learning model? Some, you know, some days at school, some days at home. You know, there's a chance parents may not want to send their kids back. So are we looking at all of the options on the table and planning ahead for that? Yes, the principals in CSUSA are now working through various scenarios and options uh, to make sure that we have not just plan B, but plan B, C, D, E, and F uh, to help support whatever comes our way based on district, uh, district mandate, state mandate. We'll make sure we have a plan in place to support our students moving forward. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Vice Mayor Mizrahi. Uh, thank you, David. I have a question. What happens for what happens with grades? Are we doing the pass fail grades or what's going on in that sense? We are not. We are we are giving them grades for their uh, performance this quarter. It, we're treating it even though it's online learning. We have instructed our teachers to have compassion and grace because this is not only a new domain for them as teachers, it's also a new domain for our students and our families. So we've, we've asked them to use compassion and grace, uh, but we also uh, do have grades at our school. We still have expectations for our students and we wanna make sure that they realize that this is, even though it's online learning, it's, it's business as usual with learning in the classroom. It's just a different, uh, different environment to learn but we're still doing the learning. So is there any consequence to the kids that are not connecting online, like the 9%, are they? I wouldn't say there's a consequence. We're just, we're trying to appeal to the, to the parents that this is an important aspect of their, of their learning and that they need to be in attendance some of the students might not be in attendance on the Zoom meeting, or they might not check in with the teacher, but they're still doing the work in the classroom. So they may not get checked in for attendance per se that day based on what the teacher requires, but they're still keeping up with the teacher's Edmodo site and the information that's posted on Edmodo. So they're still completing the work. Got it, thank you. You're welcome. Rachel, you wanted to? Yes, I just wanted to add that because at the high school, many of the students are taking college level classes, we still have expectations for end of the year coursework that needs to be completed. So working through that with AP as well as through Cambridge, um, the students still have portfolios that have to be submitted for their college level credits. So the requirements are a little bit different for these students. Okay, any, uh, Commissioner Shelley? Commissioner Shelley. This is actually for you, Mayor. Um, what is the, what options are these, is the school board looking at just in case, or uh, have they shared some of the thoughts on what they may do or not do, or like a hybrid program for next yes. year? Yeah, they have probably 500 pages worth of plans that they're looking at. <laughs> Everything from double uh -huh. sessions 
to um, hybrid learning by maybe kids come into a building three days a week and are home two days a week. Maybe they come for certain classes and they're very used. Again, high school is a little different than, than kindergarten and first grade. So the high school kids are very used to taking classes online. Many of them have always taken some of their AP classes online, but I think that Commissioner Landman could give you a, a more, a, a better up-to-date assessment of what they're doing. Commissioner? Okay. So in terms of summer school, uh, it's been announced that for now it's going to be virtual. Um, if conditions permit, it might switch to a hybrid blended model where you'll have some virtual, some um, physical. They're going to, if permitted, school will start earlier for um, selected students, lower achieving, you know, academic uh, students will start school as early as July 27th. And um, Saturday schools and school days will be extended. A lot of remediation is going to be done. There's actually a press release put out about the their academic the academic plan of the district. It's called SOAR, um, and you know just everything trying to get people to catch up on everything that was lost this past semester. And um, schools potentially offer options for a hybrid model. You know, not necessarily just physical brick and mortar, but it could be both. And it might be different in different schools because with 400 schools, one size certainly doesn't fit all and some schools will lend itself to different kinds of plans of study. Um, and I sent a copy of that press release to the city manager so he could probably forward it to all of the commissioners. Sure, yes. Any one else while our principals are there? Commissioner Shelley. No, okay. Anybody else? All right, then we really wanna thank both of our principals for joining us this evening. Keep up the good work. Um, and we'll see you at the next Zoom meeting, which I think our liaison meeting, you pick the date for next Tuesday? Monday, next Monday. So we'll see you Monday. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Commission. I just want to make Thank sure you. I don't need to stay for the budget portion. Oh, you can stay all you want. I just don't want to make you. <laughs> I have a one-year-old ready for bed, so I'm I'm good. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. I think you're good. Day. Anthony, I think you're good. <laughs> all right, Thank you. Are you waving or do you have a question, Commissioner Weinberg? Couldn't hear you. Okay, back to the regular agenda and item seven. We have no quasi-judicial public hearings tonight, so we're on number eight, ordinances, first public reading. I'm going to request the city attorney to read ordinance A. Thank you, Mayor. An ordinance of the City Commission of the City of Aventura, Florida, amending ordinance 2019-08, which ordinance adopted a charter school operating and capital budget for the Aventura City of Excellence School for fiscal year 2019 to 2000, July 1 to June 30th, by revising the 2019-2020 fiscal year budget document as outlined in Exhibit A attached here to, authorizing the city manager to do all things necessary to carry out the aims of this ordinance and providing for an effective date. And I have a motion for approval of the ordinance. Made by Commissioner Narotsky, seconded by Commissioner Shelley. I'm going to request that the city manager review the item. Thank you, Mayor. As in our normal budget, the, uh, we amend the school budgets um, during the year. This is the year-end budget amendment for ACES. Uh, as, as it looks, um, we're amending the budget in the, uh, the amount of $199,248. But this is really to show this money that came into the city for um, three different items. So we show it as, a, as money coming in, but it's also money that is, is, uh, is an expense. The first was uh, $27,500 for Title IV student support. This is to support better learning in the school. Um, we have $32,000 for a school resource officer, uh, the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas um, Security Act, 
was that we, we get money each year now for uh, a school resource officer. Uh, I believe this will be the last year you'll probably see this type of amendment. We're gonna start putting that money in actually the budget. And then we received $139,725 for Florida's best and brightest, which goes to teachers for the great work that they have done at ACES. So that's money that goes to the teachers. So it's kind of a 199,000 in and 199,000 out. So it's an in and out. Oh, okay. Um, and the money you get from the state does not nearly cover the salary of a school resource officer. No, uh, Aventura has gone above and beyond that they've always had an officer before it was uh, fashionable to have one. Okay. Um, any questions? All right, then I'm going to open the item for public comment and request the city clerk to review the procedures for members of the public to provide comments. If there's any members of the public that would like to speak at this time, please tap on your screen and click on the raise hand icon to raise your hand to speak. And if you are on a phone, you can press star nine. Mayor, I'm not seeing anybody who wants to speak on this item. Okay, then I'm gonna close the item for public comment and I'm going to ask the clerk for a roll call vote. Commissioner Landman? Yes. Commissioner Dr. Marks? Yes. Commissioner Narotsky? Yes. Commissioner Shelley? Yes. Commissioner Weinberg? Yes. Vice Mayor Mahi? Yes. And Mayor Weissman? Yes. Motion passes on first reading. Thank you. I'm going to request the city attorney to read ordinance B. Thank you, Mayor. An ordinance of the city of Aventura, Florida, amending chapter 42, streets, sidewalks, and other public places of the city code by amending article one in general, creating section 42-1, construction of public utilities or works and public rights of way, construction of paving and drainage on private property permit required, effective installation of city utility exemption, providing for severability, providing for inclusion in the code and providing for an effective date. Can I ask for a motion for approval of the ordinance? Uh, Commissioner Weinberg seconded by Commissioner Landman. I'm going to ask the city manager to review the item. Thank you, Mayor. This is chapter 42 streets and parkways. We're just asking uh, to create a new section in the code that says anybody messing around in our streets or right of ways, you got to put it back the way you found it and uh, to our specifications. <laughs> the cat, we're re really copying over the county code, but you know, anybody who's been around and Joe Kroll has been around a long enough time to know that there are people come in and do hit and runs in the street. Uh, we find them when somebody, you know, trips over a hole in the ground or does a really terrible, res you know, resurfacing job. So this, this forces us or gives us the ability to track them down and make them fix it correctly. Okay, um, I'm gonna ask if any member of the commission has a question. Uh, Commissioner Narotsky. Uh, just real quick, Ron, I know that I called you one evening about it. Is that one, um, you know that inter the sidewalk that I texted you a picture of, did we fix that one? This is, this is over by the old uh, Blockbuster? Yeah. Yes, that was fixed the next day. All right, thank you. Any other commissioners? Okay, I'm gonna open the item for public comment. Same procedures as the last item. If there's anybody from the public that would like to speak on this item, please tap on your screen and click on the raise hand icon to speak. If you are on your phone, please press star, star nine to speak. There are no comments at this time, Mayor. Okay, then I'm gonna close it for public comment and I'm gonna ask the clerk for a roll call vote. Commissioner Landman? Yes. Commissioner Dr. Marks? Yes. Commissioner Narotsky? Yes. Commissioner Shelley? Yes. Commissioner Weinberg? Yes. Yes. Vice Mayor Mizrahi? Yes. And Mayor Weissman? Yes. Motion passes on first reading. 
Okay, the next item on our agenda is item nine ordinances. This is a second reading. I'm going to request the city attorney to read the ordinance A. Thank you, Mayor. An ordinance of the city of Aventura, Florida, amending chapter four, alcoholic beverages of the city's code of ordinances by amending section 4.2, location of establishments to clarify applicability and to revise exceptions amending chapter 31 land development regulations by amending section 31 171 off street parking loading and driveway standards to add regulations for electric vehicle charging stations and spaces amending chapter 31 land development regulations by amending sections 31 143 residential zoning districts section 31 144 business zoning districts and section 31145 town center zoning districts to clarify applicability of conditional uses, amending chapter 31 land development regulations by amending section 3121 definitions to clarify definition of accessory use, amending chapter 31 land development regulations by amending section 31191 sign regulations generally by amending section 31191F to revise and add prohibited signs by amending section 31191J to add wall signs for assisted living facilities, amending chapter 31 land development regulations by amending section 31221 landscaping requirements to add a definition and regulation for use of artificial turf, amending chapter 31 land development regulations by amending section 31147 Community Facilities District, Section 31148, Recreation Open Space District, and Section 31149, Utilities District, to revise permitted size of above ground fuel storage tanks for emergency generators, providing for severability, providing for inclusion in the code, and providing for an effective date. Okay, uh, may I have a motion for approval of the or ordinance? made by Vice Mayor Ms. Rahi, seconded by Commissioner Shelley. Uh, any member of the commission have any questions or comments? Commissioner, Ms. Vice Mayor Ms. Rahi. Um, yes, Joanne, if we approve this like it is and we need to make some changes based on everything that's happened with the pandemic, are we able to go back and adjust, like for example, especially with the alcohol. I know that we lower the amount of people that need to be there, but can we go back and do an amendment or? Um, thank you, Commissioner. Uh, the amendment changes only the exception for restaurants from, before you had to have 4,000 square feet of floor area to uh, qualify for this exemption. Uh, and now it's 2,500 square feet. So it doesn't, um, it doesn't regulate the number of people in the restaurant, just the size of the restaurant. Got it. But in any event, the answer to your question is yes, you can revise at any time um, any provision of the, of the city code using the, uh, the uh, public hearing process. Thank you. Anyone, anyone else, any other commissioner want to address the item? Okay, then I'm gonna close it to the commission and I'm gonna open it for public comment and request the city clerk to review the procedures for members of the public should they wish to comment. If you would like to speak on this item, please tap on your screen to press the, star, the raise hand uh, icon. And if you are on a telephone, please press star nine to raise your hand. If you'd like to speak on this item. Mayor, I'm not seeing anybody who would like to provide comments at this time. Okay, then I'm gonna close the item for public comment and ask the clerk for a roll call vote. Commissioner Landman? Yes. Commissioner Dr. Marks? Yes. Commissioner Narofsky? Yes. Commissioner Shelley? Yes. Commissioner Weinberg? Yes. Vice Mayor Mizrahi? Yes. And Mayor Weissman? Yes. Motion passes on second and final reading.
I'm going to now request the city attorney to read ordinance B. Thank you, Mayor. An ordinance of the city of Aventura, Florida, adopting the attached charter school operating and capital budget for the Aventura City of Excellence School for fiscal year 2020-2021, July 1 to June 30th, pursuant to section 4.05 of the city charter, authorizing expenditure of funds established by the budget, providing for budgetary control, providing for personnel authorization, providing for gifts and grants, providing for amendments, providing for encumbrances, providing for severability, and providing for an effective date. Uh, can I have a motion for approval of the ordinance? Uh, motion made by Commissioner Narotsky. Can I have a second, please? Made by Commissioner Shelley. Um, I'm going to ask if any member of the commission has any questions about this item. Um, City Manager, do you want to review the item? Uh, Mayor, actually, it's on second reading. The, uh, I, I, would just, I would just like to thank uh, everybody for uh, their input on it. And uh, I, didn't, I was going to wait to the end of the meeting, but since you gave me the opportunity, I would like to thank uh, uh, Brian Riducci, who really, was, uh, really worked very hard on this, and, uh, and the, both, both budgets. Um, so I'd just like to thank him. There really wasn't any changes from first reading. So it is the money that uh, follows the students and the money that the city put, puts forth to uh, operate and uh, run this, the ACES school. Okay, so can I have a motion to approve the ordinance? Made by Commissioner Shelley, seconded by Commissioner Narotsky. Anyone from the commission, any comments, questions? All right, no commissioners wish to speak to it. I'll open it for public comment and let the city clerk take it. Any members of the public who would like to speak on this item, please press your screen and click on the raise hand icon in order to speak. If you are on a phone, please press star nine to raise your hand to speak on this item. Mayor, I'm not seeing anybody who would like to speak on this item. Okay, can, can we know how many people are listening? Currently, there are 12 attendees, about three of those are staff members, so there's about nine. There were 16 when we started. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Then I'm closing the item for public comment and asking the clerk for roll call vote. Commissioner Landman? Yes. Commissioner Dr. Marks? Yes. Commissioner Narowski? Yes. Commissioner Shelley? Yes. Commissioner Weinberg? Yes. Vice Mayor Mizrahi? Yes. And Mayor Weissman. Yes. Motion passes on second and final reading. I'm going to request the city attorney to read ordinance C. Thank you, Mayor. An ordinance of the city of Aventura, Florida, adopting the attached Don Sofa Aventura High School budget fund 191 for fiscal year 2020-2021, July 1 to June 30th, pursuant to section 4.05 of the city charter, authorizing expenditure of funds established by the budget providing for budgetary control, providing for personnel authorization, providing for gifts and grants, providing for amendments, providing for encumbrances, providing for severability, and providing for an effective date. Can I ask for a motion for approval of the ordinance? Made by Commissioner Landman, seconded by Vice Mayor Ms. Rahi. Um, do any members of the commission have any questions or comments? Dr. Linda Marks. So um, I just wanted to mention that there was a cost saving that I noticed um, run as a result of two of the items that we talked about last time. Yes. That, um, that did yes. save the city some money. Uh, legal fees were removed at 10,000 and bank fees were also removed at $5,100. Um, to bring down the, the total uh, contribution from the city to 487,870 from 502,969 dollars. And then we will also be getting a credit back on the buses? Um, 
Yes, we, yes, definitely, because we won't, we won't be getting invoiced. Okay, and then last meeting, we discussed the fact that um, there was, it was called a future ready coach, and now we're looking at it as an instructional technology specialist. And um, I believe that what, what we said is we would first see if there was even anybody available and then if someone was found, then that could be added to the budget, should they find it, and should the commission agree to do that. Is that correct? Yes, I think. Okay, do you, is Rachel still on the call? Yes, yes, she is. Okay, Rachel, uh, have you posted Dr. the- Rachel, Dr. Marks would like you to comment on the availability of that kind of position. Or even right. if it's posted. Uh, yeah, so we're in the final stages with HR just to get the job title changed because we needed to change it and then it will be posted. We're hoping by the end of this week that job will be posted. So Rachel, just so I understand, it's like it takes two weeks to post to change a name and post a job? <laughs> we had a, a system changeover. We moved from UltiPro to ADP and so in that system changeover because nobody else has that position in our system, we need to now go search for it in UltiPro. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. If memory serves me right, last year during our hiring, there was also a changeover of HR systems or functions at Charter School USA. It, it seems, I don't know, given the, what the world is going through now, it seems like a dangerous time to be changing your systems. Um, it's getting harder and harder by the day to find teachers. So I would, I would kindly request that you get this position posted as soon as possible. And, and I don't believe you have to establish and classify it with the state. The position exists at the state. So, okay, anyone else, any questions? All right, I'm gonna open the item for public comment. If there are any members of the public that would like to speak on this item, please tap on your screen to raise your hand icon. If you're on a telephone, please press star nine. Here, there's nobody who would like to make a comment on this item. Just so you know, I did have somebody, a member of staff just test it and the raise hand icon is going up. So <laughs> it is working. <laughs> Good. All right, then I'm closing it for public comment and asking the clerk for a roll call vote. Commissioner Landman? Yes. Commissioner Dr. Marks? Yes. Commissioner Narotsky? Yes. Commissioner Shelley? Yes. Commissioner Weinberg? Yes. Vice Mayor Mizrahi? Yes. And Mayor Weissman? Yes. Motion passes on second and final reading. Okay, we have no resolutions. Do any commissioners have any reports? Commissioner Weinberg. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, an update from what we discussed last time with regard to uh, a graduation, high school graduation parade that is scheduled for uh, a week from Thursday at 6 p.m., twice around Country Club Drive. Uh, so we will have for sure uh, things that are on order for the sort of the swag bag will be uh, a class of 2020 mask, a baseball cap, a t-shirt, a uh, beautiful cupcake, a uh, book, a book on how to be independently, uh, financially independent, uh, <clears throat> a coupon for a free pizza, uh, at Sicilian Pizza Oven, and uh, I'm not done yet, I hope. Hopefully there will be more, but uh, it's a nice little gift bag for uh, the students. And uh, today, when dropping food off at, uh, at the uh, fire rescue station number eight, uh, they gave me the contact number to see if we can arrange for a fire truck to, uh, to lead the procession so that it's a backup so that uh, if they're on call, they won't have to uh, miss the parade. So I'm gonna look into that as well. So uh, obviously to the extent uh, anyone has uh, other ideas, um, please share them uh, with the manager because we still have about uh, 10 days. And 
I don't know if Michael Stern is on the call, but maybe at some point we can find out what the RSVPs are. Uh, but that's all I have for now. Thank you. I talked, I talked to Michael a little earlier this evening. Um, Ron is very aware of the RSVPs. It's somewhere in like around 65. There are more, you're giving me a thumbs up, my number's correct, there are more, but, but some of the ones that were generated above this, he believes are the people that would stand around the circle cheering, not the students that would be in the processional. But um, he's busy getting the information out. We're gonna push it on our website, correct city manager? Yes. But it was somewhere, it was somewhere like 63 or 65, Howard. Um, I also have to give a really big thank you to Dr. Marks for <laughs> dealing with the baseball hats and the t-shirts and it, you know no good deed goes unpunished every time you think you've got something worked out there there's another little glitch that happens um, uh, I certainly anticipate we'll get a few more food or pizza. I don't know, Mark, that we'll talk Apple into giving each one of them an iPhone and a bottle of cologne, but Commissioner Weinberg's on it, so you never know. <laughs> That's right. Come, Vice Mayor Mizrahi. I have a question. Who's donating? Where are we getting the donation for all this that we're giving them? It's a private donation, Mr. Commissioner Weinberg. Uh, the, it was a $7,000 donation from Grant Cardone, uh, Cardone Capital. Okay. Or I guess, no, his, uh, I think it was from his nonprofit. The foundation. It's a, yeah, it came from foundation. a foundation for Michael. Commissioner Shelley. Yeah, as you know, one of the items we had on our um, consent agenda tonight was the approval of a uh, audit company. And I just want to thank Brian Reducci for the great job he did, because I will tell you, God knows how many people looked at, but each one of these applications was got close to 100 pages, and he had put together, we had a committee that was excellent. But Brian, I want to say thank you to you. He did an amazing job, professionally handled. We did all the interviews, we did all the readings, and I got to tell you something, I've never been so bored in my life reading some of these <laughs> resumes. But at the end of the day, we got a phenomenal company that's going to be doing the audit. I just want to thank Brian for this great job. Okay. We're, we're on, re Howard? I just wanted to note that as I'm looking at my screen, it says Brian Reducci, Assistant City Manager. And that looks pretty good, Brian. It looks nice. <laughs> I don't have that on my screen. Um... All right, are there any other reports? Then I'm going to open up this meeting to public comments. And let me ask this first. City Clerk, will you see if there's anyone that wants to make a public comment, then I'll have the attorney read his piece. There's no one that wants to make one, we don't need to do it. I have two hands up at this moment. Okay, so Mr. City Attorney, will you please advise us? Thank you, Mayor. Very briefly, just to remind the public in accordance with the commission procedures, this is the part of the agenda where the city commission will receive input and comments from the public, but under our rules, the commissioners are not to engage in any discussion or back and forth with the members of the public providing comment. In instead, if there's any follow-up action necessary, the city manager will follow up subsequent to the meeting. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Um, Ms. Clark? Okay. You have to give them the directions of what they need to do to speak. Right. Uh, uh, Rachel Friedland, you are free to speak. You have uh, three minutes. Good evening. My name is Rachel Saltzman Friedland, and I live at 21019 Northeast 38th Avenue in Aventura. I have lived in this community since I was a teenager and I am now proudly raising my four children here. This past month has made me more proud than ever to call Aventura my home. My children and I had wanted to figure out a way to give back during a time of crisis and we started a GoFundMe to raise money for the Aventura heroes. We had set out to just feed the first responders including the doctors and nurses in the hospitals, the police and the firefighters who were serving Aventura. 
Some of you may know that after we started, Mayor Weissman and Commissioner Weinberg joined our team to help support our local heroes. As of this afternoon, we have raised $40,000 to help. This has come from donations from more than 200 people in our community. I also want to especially thank Commissioner Marks, who has contributed to our efforts, and Commissioner Shelley, who has pledged to donate. Our efforts in Aventura have been huge. We have been delivering meals five to six days a week to hundreds of doctors and nurses at the Aventura Hospital and the Mount Sinai ER. We have delivered meals to those taking care of our seniors in our ALFs in the city. We have delivered meals to all three of our fire rescue stations. And we've delivered meals to the Aventura police, the 911 dispatchers, and our city bus drivers. Basically, we have tried to let all of these heroes know how much we appreciate them. This morning, we honored some more heroes in our city. Our teachers, who are educating our children in the city. We delivered more than $11,000 in public gift cards that will be now sent out to ACES and Don Sofer High School teachers as an expression of the gratitude that they do in helping raise all of our children. Every dollar that we have spent on food is going to our local Aventura restaurants. This was part of our effort to help the local businesses during these difficult times. And I can tell you each and every one of them is greatly appreciative of this effort. Today, the Israeli Deputy Consul General, Casa Banase Harbor, joined with us in our efforts to feed the Aventura heroes. To be joined with our council from Israel made us all very proud. She met us and we picked up food at the Soho Deli and together we honored the local firefighters. We have also been helping individuals in need of assistance with groceries and paper goods. And we have spread the word to everyone that if there is anyone in our city who needs help, please reach out to me. I'll even give my cell phone number publicly. It's 305-409-8889. And we ask people to reach out really if they do need help. Many people have contributed over 200 people, but if there's anybody else that wants to help with the efforts to feed the Aventura heroes and the people in need in Aventura, you can go to www.aventuraheroes.com. I also want to mention, I know that there's a high school seniors parade that is gonna take place in Aventura. And on that invitation, there is a special place for people to donate to the aventuraheroes.com. This is a time for the graduates and the people in our city to show their appreciation to our first responders. We have also reached out to the children at ACES to give them a chance to be involved with giving back. We dropped off art canvases and they are creating art projects titled Aventura Heroes, which we are then going to deliver to say thank you from all of our city's students. Finally, I just wanna say that this was an effort that started just for myself and my children to support our Aventura heroes. But I learned very quickly that in a time of crisis like this, real leaders lead. Our city is very fortunate to be a loving and kind place, but mostly a place with tremendous leaders. Mayor Weissman and Commissioner Weinberg have really shown the people of Aventura that in tough times they are there for them. They've shown the first responders that they will do what they have to for them. And these leaders have proven to be the heroes themselves. I want to thank everyone who donated and helped make me proud to call Aventura my home. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other members of the public that would like to speak at this time? It looks like Yvonne Lager. Yeah. Are we having problems? Okay. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, yes. we can. Perfect. I just wanted to thank all of you for the Zoom meetings. Oh, can you please state your name? Because I can oh, see it, but I don't know if everyone can. <laughs> okay, Yvonne Lager, 3131 Northeast 108th Street and the atrium. 
thank you so much for the Zoom meetings. They really do connect us still to you. And that's very important. We want to thank all of you, all of you, commissioners, mayor, for everything you're doing for us, because it's excellent. I mean, really, really, really good. I mean, it's helped all of us. I mean, every, every resident at the atrium and all the leaders here, the condo board members, on, on how to handle everything in, in Aventura. So thank you so much. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Is there anybody else from the public that would like to speak at this time? Please raise your hand. Mayor, I'm not seeing anybody else who would like to speak at this time. Okay, then I would like to also thank the entire community of Aventura. They've opened their hearts, they've opened their restaurants, they've opened their supplies. I, they, they have tried their best, city manager, to follow all of your orders. We've had relatively few, if any, disturbances. I, I think that it is a city in a class by itself. Um, so this is just a big shout out for me to every single one of our residents. The times are tough. None of us have ever been through anything like this and we don't know where the future is going. But the one thing I know is that we will make it through together. And I thank all of you. Amen. Thank you, Mark. If there's nothing else, can I have a motion to adjourn? A motion. motion. Second. <laughs> this, any opposed? No. Okay, this meeting's officially adjourned. Be safe, stay inside, wear your masks. Have Thank a good you. night. Thank you. Thank you all. Good night. Thank you all. Good night. Thank you.